This is a quick demonstration of the how the messaging works with the Chatterbox devices. Uh, Chatterbox devices are for sending messages um, without using cell service or internet or things like that. And they are designed to get a message where it needs to go even if someone's out of range. That's kind of what I'm showing here. I'm going to simulate being out of range by turning a device off and then turning it back on. So the the devices here, Feather, I call it that because of the type of board it's using. This is just my test rig that has no battery, so I can turn it off really easily just by unplugging it. This is the last prototype I put together, and I've got a new one that'll be coming out in a, another week or so. I'm just waiting on some hardware. So I call this one Proto. This is a really old prototype. It's called Box 3. But they all have the, the message delivery and mess capabilities. They all encrypt and sign messages the same way. It's just the, these happen to be the ones I have around right now. So if I want to send a message, the system first, it's going to try to send it direct through the air. So to show that, uh, first I can look at what other devices are around. If I touch that button, that looks like a phone. Um, these devices are aware of who else is around. So you can imagine these would probably be pe your friends' names or whatever, not not these weird names. But this is aware that Box 3 and Feather are nearby, and it can see their strength, the signal strengths, and things like that. So I'm going to go back to the, his the message history. Okay, so I've cleared their message history just to make this easy to watch. So let's say Feather wants to send a device to Proto. Um... I'll do a direct message, I'll choose Proto, and I'm going to do just a quick hi. The message is going direct through the air, there's no need to even do meshing. <laughs> and so what you can see here that happened, the message went out, it was acknowledged, and the check mark here shows that, that the message was direct, it was acknowledged, there was no meshing involved. Box 3 was not able, the message wasn't for it, so it ignored it, but also it wouldn't be able to decrypt it anyway because it was encrypted with these two devices, uh, asymmetric keys. So if uh, if this guy wanted to reply, he would touch to, I'm not going to do that. So to simulate a device not being around, I'm going to turn this thing off. It's going to take these things a few minutes to consider that device gone. But once it is, any messages that are intended for this one are going to have to be accepted into the mesh cache. And there may be more than two devices around that could play a role in that. I'm just using these two for now for this demonstration. So what the, the important things here are this indicator down here with the mesh cache. It's kind of like a progress bar. And if it starts to fill up, it means this device is holding on to some packets for other other things that it will deliver or will deliver to the next hop as it notices those devices are nearby. The green dot means that there's at least one other device around. So I'm going to look here. It does take a two to three minutes for these devices to consider this one gone. As soon as they do, you'll be able to see that in their list of who's around. So box three is the one that I turned off and maybe the guy left town, uh, left the house, whatever, or maybe the device is turned off. It's kind of the same thing. Once this device is gone, either of these two that would want to get a message to it are going to have to submit that message to the mesh cache. Okay, so it's fallen off of this guy's picture. So the last one is Feather. It should be just here within a few seconds. It should notice this guy's gone. So I'm going to switch this one back to the message history. Okay, it fell off. So let's switch this one back. One thing I can do is um, just, this is really just for information. A person probably wouldn't do this, but it helps me with my testing. Um, let's say... If I want to see what would happen if this thing did try to send a message to box three, 
uh, I can look at the path and it shows me it's going to go to Proto 1 to Box 3. So based on what this device knows, it would try to mesh it. It would first deliver it to Proto 1. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Direct message to the device that's off, Box 3. So I will deliver. It's trying to send it direct. That's not going to work, obviously. So it fails over to sending it through the mesh. And we can see there's some packets now on this guy's mesh cache because it's holding the packets of the message it wants to get out. And we, we can watch over here the message. There we go. See, it's mesh cache now has some packets in it. So this guy is ready to deliver if it finds another hop that will get it closer to this guy or if it happens to come in contact with this guy. To simulate that, I'm going to turn off the feather. Okay, so that guy's gone and somehow these two happen to come in contact with each other. It could be that this, they've always been in contact with each other, but this guy has a huge antenna and is in the center and this device wasn't able to see this device. In that case, the mesh would happen really quickly. But since it was off, I'm gonna turn it on and it's gonna take 60 seconds for this device to become aware that box three is around. So we will just wait for that. And what will happen is it will take the packets out of its mesh that are intended for this one, its cache, and deliver them and then they should show up, the message should show up on here. And even though the, even though the message passes through here, since the, it's encrypted with these two devices, a symmetric key, this device is not able to read the message. It just knows where it's supposed to go and helps it along. What, what we can watch here is it will say it's mesh forwarding once it starts to deliver the message. The receiving is the, the pings going back and forth. Okay, mesh forward. So, and it says this device accepted it. This device is actually acknowledging it. So here, there's the message I typed was okay. And it came from Feather. And this device acknowledged it. And the acknowledgement is going through the mesh as well. I'm going to show how the acknowledgement is delivered through meshing. So I'll do that by turning this device off. Okay, so that's off. There's no one around. Now let's say this guy drives closer to this thing, or again, maybe the, the gap here, this device is able to span that gap. So this would happen quickly then. Okay, so now the feather's on. It may take this device 60 seconds to become aware that this one's here. But as soon as it is, uh, what to watch for here is the this OK message that went out, the circle means the message was accepted by someone in the cluster, but not the end recipient. So it's it's in the mesh, the group's mesh cache. Once that circle fills in, that is this your confirmation that whoever the end recipient was got the message. You'll be able to watch this one deliver it by watching the status down here. We'll say that it's forwarding. And also the dot will fill in over here. Mesh forward, there it was. And see the, the dot filled in, so now this one knows box three got its message, even though it wasn't around. So what, one last thing I'll show that I didn't already is the broadcasting. So the, the messages that I've been sending around so far have been direct. So there is a sender and a recipient no one else can read the message even if they're assisting in the delivery if i wanted to broadcast a message to the entire group uh this feather just sent one two three both devices should get it yeah so see they both got it it was encrypted with the group's symmetric key so no one else could read it and uh so hopefully that gives you an idea of how the messaging works.